Welcome back to the Prillworks channel. My name is John and I have another squiggle project. I haven't done one in a while. Uh, and the board I need for this is in the way back of this huge stack against this side door here. So I finally got to it and I can bring it over to the workbench to rough cut it. Now this is a wide piece of Jatoba. It's eight quarters, so it's two inches thick. And you can see my circular saw is struggling with it. I do need to put a new blade on that. I took my board over to the bandsaw and table saw to cut into some strips. I used the table saw for the resawing because I remembered that this board is really tough on bandsaw blades and it tore up my blade last time so I wanted to preserve that as much as possible and use this backup thin curve blade that I have for situations just like this. I then took the pieces over to the joiner and planer and milled them down to three quarters of an inch thick and then took one of those pieces over to the CNC to cut my first swiggle. You'll see eventually that I cut all of these pieces out on the CNC, but my initial strategy was to cut a reference piece from the top and bottom shape of the box and use those pieces to flush trim against, which allows me to extrude this shape out to the desired depth. I use a template to trace the shape on my remaining strips and rough cut them at the bandsaw. I can then glue these rough pieces to my reference piece. I'm using a 3 16 inch blade, which allows me to easily navigate the curves. I stay just outside my marker line, which should leave about a sixteenth inch or so to flush trim away later. I glue a piece to the front and back of my reference pieces, and the most critical part of this glue up is making sure there is overlap on every edge. It's a tough balance because you want there to be a small amount of material to route away, but you also want it to be simple enough to glue up correctly. With the glue dry, I can take the piece to the router table to flush trim, riding the bearing against that middle reference piece. This has worked okay for me in the past, but this wood is so dense and unforgiving that I eventually had to call an audible. Alright, so I've run into a little bit of an issue with the method I would like to use. So when I enter the cut here for flush trimming, it's okay, coming downhill here. But when I flip it around and want to come and enter here, it's sort of going uphill with the flush trim bit. And it's just a little sketchy. You see I get a, a bunch of tear out here. The bit just really catches and it's a little bit more dangerous than I would like. And it also can cause the workpiece to get damaged, which I also don't want. So I don't think I really have a choice as far as getting this project done other than to just go back to the CNC. I'm going to cut the rest of those pieces out and then glue them all together and then we'll move on to the rest of the project. You can see that I traced the shape on the strips, but luckily didn't rough cut them out yet. Looking back, there would be better ways to do this from the start if planning to use the CNC the whole time. That includes nesting the pieces on a wide board to save material and including alignment pins to aid in a cleaner glue up. There were some slight overlaps here and there which leads to a ton of sanding so alignment pins would have definitely been helpful here. I started out with my little 3 inch sander but wasn't able to make it into the valleys like I had hoped, so I switched to the 6 inch sander to smooth things out as best as I could and kick the can down the road as far as those valleys were concerned. Okay now for the most stressful part of this project, routing mortises into the squiggles. I cut out this template on the CNC and glued some MDF to the outside edges so that it slips snugly over the squiggle. Holding the jig and the squiggle securely was a little bit of a challenge. It took six clamps in a few different directions to keep everything down tight. From there, I used a half inch spiral bit and a guide bushing to ride along the template. I took light passes so as not to put too much pressure on the bit or my work holding situation. The mortises on the humps went 5 eighths of an inch deep and the valleys went a half inch deep. This is the best view I could get of what was going on under the hood. I plunge about an eighth inch deep and then ride along the template with the bushing. 
I can't necessarily see this when I'm doing it, so it's kind of cool to see it as you guys are seeing it as well. You just gotta have to trust that the uh, bushing is doing its job and riding along the template, and then it's not gonna go further than it can. This spindle sander was an impulse buy because there wasn't really another way to clean up the valleys. I did my best to take it slow because I didn't want to ruin the shape of the squiggle which would affect the gap between the two pieces. With the two pieces taped together, I trimmed the ends at the table saw using a good crosscut blade. I then put the pieces in the vise and added a 3 inch radius roundover to all of the long edges leaving the end edges straight. These roundovers really transform the piece into something cool in my opinion. I considered using a 3 quarter inch roundover on the top and bottom edges, but I wasn't sure if I would route into the bottom of the recesses that I made earlier. Nonetheless, I'm really happy with how these things ended up looking. And I use my offhand here to act as sort of a stabilizing fence against the workpiece so that the router does not tip. There's a fair amount of hand sanding to be done. I use some orbital discs as well as some sponges to get everything smooth and ready for finish. I did raise the grain with some water and then came back once again to give a final sand and I brought this up to 220 grit. And for the finish, I used Rubio Monocoat, which is a 3 to 1 mixture of their finish oil with the accelerator, which is the clear thing you see here. So you do three parts of the oil and then one part of the accelerator, mix it up, and then apply it. A little bit goes a long way, so you can see I just pour a little bit onto it and then rub it in with a white Scotch-Brite pad. I'll rub that into the wood as best as I can and then let that sit for a little while and then wipe all the excess off with some blue shop towels. The final step was to add some inserts to hold rings and cufflinks. I added a piece of double sided tape to one end of my felt, then rolled it up making sure not to roll too tight. If you roll too tight, the felt won't have any give and it can be hard to deform when adding a ring to the box. From there, I cut the rolls down to fit the recesses using my Edward scissor hand scissors. In the past, I would use more double-sided tape here, but I decided to give hot glue a try, and it worked really well and will be my go-to from now on. That's it for this one. I have one more video planned for this year, which should be a fun one, so be on the lookout for that. Thanks for watching.